here we have a real inductor and a real inductor is made up of real wire or and therefore it is coiled and therefore because it is made of wire copper wire uh, generally then it will have a resistance and the resistance we tend to show it is in series with the, in the inductive part of the circuit so this whole thing represents a real coil now I've done a real coil and as you will see that I have measured its resistance and I will also measure its inductance using a multimeter as you will see. So we get some values and the values we get are 6.4 ohms for the resistance and for the inductance which is L we get a value which is about 120 millihenries for this particular coil. Now to show that there is this thing going on which you have to trust me which is this back EMF if we take the resistance of the coil which is 6.4 ohms is what we measured so if we say R equals 6.4 and that is measured in ohms now if we just do a simple calculation if we hadn't learned what we've already discovered we would apply ohms law and we would say V divided by R in this case 110 divided by 6.4 and if we do that as a calculation what you get is 18.34 amps would flow round in this circuit and that's what you'd expect to get now if I connected this up as I have done and will show you in the circuit with the, the multimeter the multimeter can only take 10 amps so if I knew that was going to be the current of flow I wouldn't want to use this multimeter but as you'll see when we do connect the multimeter up the current that actually flows is a lot less in fact if we have a look it's round about 2.8 amps so contrary to what is going on there is a lot more stopping the current flow and remember that is the XL part that's the inductive reactance caused by the frequency And we can work out what the total opposition to current flow of that circuit is using those figures. So that's calculated current, which is actually wrong. The actual I is 2.8 amps. Therefore, what we can do is we can calculate what the total opposition to current flow is, which is V divided by I. And if we do that, that becomes 110 divided by So what we're actually getting opposing the current flow is the equivalent of this. Now this is not R because it's this bit is R, this bit is XL and the two of these together is something you've probably all heard of, it's called Z which is impedance and impedance is another unit that's measured in ohms because you've used it, you've probably come across it a fault loop impedance ZE and ZS so Z is made up of these two here's a real circuit real inductor with real figures R is 6.4 so this remember is the resistance of the actual wire that makes up the coil the inductance of the coil once wound is 120 millihenries our voltage supply is 110 50 hertz and what we can do on paper but you can't do in real life is we, we can separate the two and that's what we have done for the calculation therefore we can work out what the theoretical voltage across the resistor would be 
like the voltage of the inductor. In real life, obviously you can't do this because this coil is made up of this resonance, so they're entwined and you can't separate them. This is the good thing about principles on paper, you can. So how do we start this? Well, we start off with XL. And XL, remember, is two times pi times F times L. So I've not put any symbols in because they basically mean multiply. So if we put those figures in, so two times pi, obviously I'm gonna leave it as it is, times 50, because that's the frequency, times 0.12. And if we do that as a calculation, what you get is 37.7 ohms. So now we can work out the impedance. And the impedance includes this, which is the ohmic value of that part, and the resistance of that. Now that is given Z, and these are now out of phase. So this is out of phase by that, and it's out of phase by 90 degrees. Therefore, you can't literally add them up as you would do normally. So we have Pythagoras comes into play, which is R squared, because if you look at an impedance triangle, you have R and XL squared, square root those. So if we put those figures in, 6.4 squared, because this is a tiny amount, because that's what you want in reality, times 37.7, and we square those, and then square root your answer, we will now get impedance. Now it isn't going to alter it by a bit. So we get 38.2 ohms is what flows. Or oh, what flows, this is the impedance of the circuit. So this is the total opposition to current flow, 38. So this can now be used to work out I. And I we're going to use Ohm's law. So we're not moving away from that. So I is V divided by the total which is Z. So this is 110 divided by 38.2. And that gives us 2.87 amps. So that is how much current will flow here. And being a series circuit, that remains constant. Now we can work out the power for this circuit. Um, and whenever I'm working out power of something, remember this doesn't use any any power whatsoever. This is the only bit that does, and it's the resistance of the wire itself. So if it gets warm, this is why, because it's power equals, and the formula I always tend to go for is I squared times R. So now we can do that, so it's 2.87 squared times the resistance, which is 6.5. Four. So, trusty calculator, 2.87 squared times, and we get 52.7, and this is in watts. So the total power for this circuit is 52.7 watts for this particular circuit. Now there are lots of other things we can calculate from this as well because we can work out what the power factor for this circuit is. And power factor is relationship between the voltage and current and how far out of phase they are ultimately. So power factor is R over Z. So this is new, so power factor, I should put that in there because that's what it is. So R is 6.4 divided by Z, which is 38.2. And if we do that as a calculation, point 0.16, and let's round it up to point 0.17. Now, power factor is always a number one or less, and ideally what you're looking for is a number of one in a power factor. So this is a bad power factor for this particular circuit, 0.17, bad power factor. It means they are completely out of phase. Now, what we can do is we can find out how far out of phase they are, because if I do shift cosine of that 0.17, I get an angle of 80 degrees. So the cos 
to the minus 1. But 0.17 roughly is approximately, and this is accurate, is 80 degrees. We can now sketch a phasor diagram to represent that. So this is a series circuit. So in a series circuit, we make current the reference. I can get a pen that works. And for that, always goes horizontal. So we make I, not V, I reference. And this goes around in a direction of 2 pi f or this omega. So that's how much it rotates by. Now, what we need to do is we need to show the voltages on this. So we can work out what VR and VL are. And we do this in the same way as you would any other type of circuit. So the way to find voltages is Ohm's law. So to find VR, we'll do this one first, it is I times R of that particular circuit. Well, as it's a series circuit, it's one current, 2.87 times the resistance, 6.4, and that will give us a voltage. VL is I times its Ohm's law times XL, because that's the ohmic part of that there. And there's only one current, 2.87 times 37.7. And if we do those as calculations, so we now have the two voltages across there. Now, this is where Kirchhoff was clever, because Kirchhoff basically said that plus that will add up to the supply voltage. But what, he, what made him clever was the fact that he could work out that they were out of phase and they still add up. So the way they add up, is Pythagoras again which is what we've used over here and in fact it's used in the impedance triangle as well not that I've shown the impedance triangle on the here so we can show these on the phasor diagram I'll show them on here so VR the voltage across the resistor is 18.4 now that is in phase so that if I was to draw this to scale would be here so this is VR in relation to the I which equates to 18.4 volts. VL is 108.2. Now that is out of phase in the circuit and the way we would know which direction they go is because we can use something called civil and what we're basically looking at is the last three letters of civil. V leads I in L. So C is capacitive, I is current, V is volts, I is current, L is inductive. So we're only ever looking at three at any one time in a circuit. So if it's a capacitive circuit, you look at the top one. If it's an inductive circuit, you look at the book, this one here. So V is in front of I in an inductive circuit in L, and this is an inductive circuit. So as this is an anti-clockwise direction, V must be going up. So VL goes up by 90 degrees. Can't draw. Not to scale, VL 108.2 volts. Now, VS, the supply voltage is 110. VS is the sum of these two. Now, you can't add them up because they're both going in different directions. So, they're the phase of some of those is where they join. And that be Vs which is 110. Now that angle there is where our 80 degrees comes in. So that is the phasor diagram. So there's Vs, there's I and it's out of phase by 80 degrees as calculated as a circuit. Just to show that the power works as well so if we can do power equals v times i times the power factor which is shown as that so that becomes 110 
times 2.87 times 0.17 and if we do this as a calculation so 110 times 2.87 times 0.17 and we're getting 53.7 watts now you're probably thinking well why are those two different it's rounding Okay, this 0.17 I've rounded up and rounded down, the current I've rounded up and rounded down, so it's the rounding that is the error. If I took the calculator's full numbers, saved them all, did the calculation, they would come out to be the same. But for all intents and purposes, our calculation is good enough.